Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vorpal Tales. Tonight, I'm happy to welcome you to part one of two of a fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons adventure entitled Rise of Pyrescythe. Uh, so before introducing my players for this evening, I just want to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsors, uh, such as Gem Hammer and Sons, Norse Foundry, Dungeon Crate, Hit Point Press, and Odd Duck Dice, which I will be using solely tonight in attempts to uh, smite the fiendish and heinous dragon slayers. Um, and also, just a quick reminder that tonight's game is rated M for Mature. Um, and at this point, players, if you would like to take a moment to introduce yourselves, who you will be playing, and where the audience can find you on the interwebs, if anywhere. We are following the standard talk order in our Discord. That is a link. Oh, it's me. It's I miss you. Red. Ha <laughs> Hey guys, I am Alan, your Eldritch Keeper. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch as the Eldritch Keeper. And today I will be playing Widriel Kithana, a half elf rogue. Hello, everyone. I am Devin. You can find me online at Sort of Sullied. And tonight I am playing uh, Artabash, the uh, life cleric. Hey guys, it's me, Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. And tonight I will be playing. Aiden Birch Blossom, the Furbog Ranger. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I am playing Nysreel, uh, who is a chromatic blue dragonborn paladin. And I don't know if anyone mentioned it, but we're all level 12, so strap in. Got that sweet, sweet power. It's the sweet, sweet power. But will it be enough to bring down the might of Pyrescythe? We don't know. All right. So as a group, you have hunted dragons before. Uh, generally smaller ones. Um, when you find yourselves called to the Duchess Verania Greenstag, going before her, you are greeted, hello, dragon hunters. I've called you here to sort out a bit of a problem that I have. You see, one of my villages far to the west of my lands has been taken by a foul creature calling himself Piasai. If you are amenable to the task of hunting this creature and killing it, I would offer to pay you one of your weights in gold and jewels. So which one's the biggest of us? Probably the Dragonborn or the Furbolg. So either Aiden or Nisrael would probably be the biggest. That is up to you guys to decide when it comes. So this uh, creature fire pyrocyte. Yes. Where where does it reside? Uh yes. Uh a small dwarven village far to the west of my lands. Um so small it has it's never been given a name. We just call it uh the village of Fireshine. For you see, they produce a the dwarves there farm a particular mushroom that only grows inside of a volcano. Dwarven village? Yes. And the dwarves couldn't take care of it? Well, they cannot, which is um, why you are here. You see, the dwarves have come under the I don't want to say enslavement, but they've been forced to work now for the dragon and his minions. Enslavement. Okay. Well. 
does the name Parasite rings any bell for me? Uh, give me either an Arcana or History check, whichever one be better. Not a natural 20, a dirty 20. All right. So uh, what did you, did you roll history or did you roll history? history? Uh, no, okay. sorry, Arcana. 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 Okay. You've heard the name Pyre Scythe. Uh, you've seen it in tomes that you've come across um, and that you've studied. Um, it is a dragon. Uh, from what you know, the dragon is centuries old by the tellings. Does it tell me what type of dragon it is? Um, so in this world, dragons are effectively just dragons. They don't really go by a type. Okay. Um, so um, the other thing you do know is that it is rumored that this one can breathe fire. Okay. And usually they don't? Some do. Depends on their ecology. Some can breathe frost. Okay. Some lightning. Some high-powered steam. All right, so the name does ring a bell. From what I remember, he is fire. He's a fire breather, I think. So, you know, we might want to watch for that. Oh, I'm in, by the way. Uh, what I don't know about Dulot. The, the name's Aiden. The name is Vidriel. It is up to your. It's up to you guys if you want to have worked together before or have been traveling together. It's completely up to you. As a hunter, I know that I have not worked with any of you, except maybe the rogue. All you others are too loud. I shift clumsily in my armor. <laughs> I just nod along. All right. <clears throat> so we head off. Well, or do you all need to prepare? Yeah, yes, right? Rations. How far is it? How far is the village? <clears throat> it is approximately a week's ride from here. Oh, definitely rations. A week's ride. Well, okay. Yes. As I said, it is definitely at the outskirts of my land. Right, so that means walking would be longer. Yes. And are we provided said rides? If you need, if you need mounts, you know, please see the stables, and they will supply you with them. Good. So rations, tents. <coughs> Anybody? No. Uh, what do I have? Uh, I don't even remember. What, what all do I got here? You should pick up rations, but I'm also an outlander, so I should be able yeah. to supply our needs as we travel. Ah, that's good. Someone, Which is why I always take one. Someone that's you, one with nature. And I just... Yeah. Pull, uh. yeah. I mean, you definitely can. It will take you slightly longer if you have to stop to forage. I, I vote we grab rations, especially if we're riding. I mean, if anybody has a bag of holding, it's not that hard. Yeah. And uh, I just pull out a cube and I'm like, and I have any accommodations we might need. Also, you have a cleric. There's a create food and water spell. Huh. If push yeah. comes to shove. Did you have it? You have uh, Ironstone, Artabash? Oh, no, I have an instant fortress. Uh, you have your little house. Yeah, your instant yeah. fortress. Yeah. I own a house. Yes. It moves with me. Yeah, okay. I carry it around, don't you? It's just much more convenient that way. You have a, an equivalent of Morgan Cain's Beneficent Mansion. I also yeah. have a handy haversack, which can essentially hold like 80 pounds mm -hmm. yeah. or eight cubic feet. <clears throat> Yeah, and I have a bag of holding, so we're good. Yeah. Huh. So you guys can take a moment to load up on ration. Yeah, load up on food if you want to. Um, 
see the stables. Anybody doing anything else in town before you head out? Uh, I'm good. And uh, I'm, I'm good. Ready to head out? Uh, I take a moment to find a. Uh, I don't think Bahama generally has temples, but uh, she finds somewhere quiet and uh, prays to her deity and um, hopes that she can help liberate and protect these innocents. Actually, that's a perfect question. Do they have a temple to Bahamut? Uh, here in the duchy, yes, they do. Oh, okay. Cool. Because, here in the city, yeah, yes. I, I go because that's my deity as well, and I just do a nice little prayer and give 100 gold. The priests thank you for your donation. Yeah, oh man, that's heavy. Cool. So you head out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Aiden? You good? Yeah, just looking over my inventory. I've got enough rations. I live off the land, so I don't okay. carry much with me. Vidriel, are you good? I am good and ready to head out to the stables. Yeah, I figure rather than that, we should just rent a caravan. That way we don't actually have to do yeah, our own riding. wagon. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you acquire mounts. You can acquire a wagon if you need to. You all hmm. have gold. Yes. Enough Technically, to... a wagon would slow us down. If we individually ride, we could get there within the week. We have, if we have the wind in our backs, maybe shave off a day. This is true. Aiden will definitely procure a larger horse as he is slightly larger than a normal human or humanoid. <laughs> yeah, they have very large horses. It's essentially Clydesdales for larger humanoids. So are they almost all like war horses? So you can be supplied with either a pony, a war horse, a um, riding horse, whatever suits your character's fancy. Okay. I know I a, yeah, Nisriel is larger being a dragon board as is Aiden being a fear bold. Um, so they just kind of just require bigger mounts. All right. All right. Do we need a seal of some kind to inform the village that we are coming on your behalf? No, I, I don't think it would matter if you had one anyway. All right. Well, Seeing as the town is overseen by a dragon. All right. No checkpoints on the way? No, I mean, you can follow the roads, stop at some of the other villages along the way if you like. All right. I turn to everybody else, so I'm ready to go. What about... What what uh what is the terrain of the land? Uh, mainly grasslands, low hills. Um, until you get out towards that village, then it becomes it starts to become more mountainous. Um, the dwarves built this village at the base of what was once an active volcano. Um, you could ask around town before you leave to find out that. Um, Although the volcano is not active, there are still lava flows, which is, you know, one of the things that helps the mushrooms. These particular mushrooms grow, and the dwarves basically farm these and do some mining as well. All right. All right. 
Miss right. Real is going to make a point of trying one of these mushrooms when they get there. Okay. All right. All right. So you head out. Um, your first day, second day are nice, no, no inclement weather. Um, third day, a light rain starts. Um, when you come upon another small village along the road, doesn't look like it. Um, you guys wish to stop in the village, keep going. Unless there's something at the village that happens that attracts our attention or okay. services, uh, I suggest that we march on to destination. All right. <clears throat> so you pass through the village. Um, you pass through the village and the rain starts to get heavier and it begins to slow you down. Uh, you may camp for the night. Do you use your fortress? Oh, I figure why not. Okay. So using your fortress, um, you avoid the nastiness of camping on the muddy ground and the cold that seems to have come up. Does it create a literal fortress or does it create a portal that leads to an extra a, a literal where... fortress? Uh, you want to hear what it actually says it does? Might not want to put that in the middle of the room. <laughs> one inch, use one inch metal cube on the ground, speak the command word. It rapidly mm. grows into a fortress that remains until you speak the action to command the word that diminishes it, uh, which only works when it's empty. It is 20 feet on a side, 30 feet high, arrow slits on all sides. Maybe we and find a clearing. Yeah. Yeah, what's hey, it it's called? Okay. So instant fortress. Instant fortress. Instant fortress. Dayern's instant fortress. I think is what they called it back in the day. But yeah, yeah. You basically just create this squat little fortress, a squat little ziggurat on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we get any travelers that are like, "Is this an inn?" We're like, "No, sorry." You <laughs> get that find knock, your own at the, knock at the door. <laughs> no. it's raining it's very go, cold out here go away <laughs> knock doesn't work here go away all right work i'm a good cleric no go away <clears throat> so a couple more days pass um and you're probably you're figure you're about a day or so, like Maybe a day or a little less outside the village. So for the entire trip, we were using rations or were we foraging with people that can forage? Or a mix? Probably a mix. I, uh, I figure if we're going somewhere, like he said, I can just make food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or the cleric. Yeah. It's probably not a huge issue. All right, so we didn't spend the... rations. So save your rations. I could just make food. Yeah. All right. Save them until it's not safe to light a fire or anything like that. Yeah. The glories of level 12. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> it, it's glamping at this point. All right. Um... So as you're getting closer, you see up ahead of you, maybe about 50 yards ahead, um, they don't seem to have noticed your group coming up behind them, a uh, few wagons being pulled by horses. Um, you can see various people tied by rope to the ends of these wagons, kind of being walked, being prodded by a couple of guards. Any children? No children. Then it's not my problem. And it you seems know. they're heading in the same direction as you. Do uh, Does it look like these are some of the dwarves that have <coughs> been put upon by the dragon? 
Uh, these are not dwarves. Um, I mean, there may be a dwarf or two in there, but it looks like a mix of um, races okay. being that are tied up and being led along the road. You'll do well in the mines, you hear, as in, then you yeah. hear a crack of a whip. Uh, Nisriel is, sorry, Mr. Rogue, Nisriel is going to walk up and straight up uh, yeah. ask some of these people that are tied up, are you doing this of your own free will? So as you approach, yeah. you see one of the, um, like one of the men that's kind of like has been prodding these people. It's like, oi, who are you? What do you want here? What's your business? Uh, Nisriel straightens, uh, to her full height uh, and sort of adjusts her various weapons. And she's not trying to be intimidating, but you know, whatever. Uh, and she says, I am Nisriel, uh, paladin of Bahamut, defender of those that need defending. And I'm interested to find out if these are those. These are slaves for the market. Oh, thank you. And then she pulls out her sword to attack him. Okay. Oh, nice. Yes. yes. Roll, roll <laughs> Aiden, <for> was, <laughs> Aiden was already in the bush with his bow ready. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As a lawful good character, he did not like this. <laughs> yes. All right. So in it, ooh, 31. <laughs> that is a nat 20. Uh, and, uh, initiative. Okay, and I think you can't get better than an at twenty, but I believe um, you have a sword of a short sword of warning, which does give you advantage. Uh, yeah, short bow rolls. of warning. Yeah. Yeah, short bow of warning. Okay. Yeah, it gives me advantage. I just forgot to trigger it. Yep. But I mean, yeah, I got I got twenty, so I can't get higher. Yeah. Can't get higher than a twenty. Or can I? Crap, what did I roll? I don't know. Uh, uh, I, what did you get total, total? Total 14. All right, Widriel? 31. 31. Aiden? I think I rolled an 8. 8 total? Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, I, I rolled a you. 2 on the die. Add a thank bash. you. I'm not the worst with a 10. 10, all right. I have a plus one. I can't believe I beat you, man. All right, well, on a 31, Widriel. All right, all right. So Widriel sees that this is going to happen. So he back rolls off his horse as the same time goes to it for his quiver, hitches uh, narrow to his bow, crouches under his horse and headshots the first guy he sees. All right, go ahead and roll. And I will be shooting with this. 18. Uh, you shot one of the guys, like, poking the prisoners. And that hits. And I roll for damage. 13. All right. He grunts in pain as the arrow slams into his shoulder. Um, I believe you get two attacks. It is two. a possibility. I do That's not. Uh, where would it be written on I this sheet? Don't think you do as a rogue. Uh, on actions, where it says actions right above your attack. Attacks per action, it says one. One. Okay. So yeah, you fire off and oh wait, you went before him in initiative. I believe that gives you sneak attack. Aha! Uh, sneak attack would be ouch, I think, so I'm rolling sneak attack. That should be, I think, like 26. Five, five, six. Yeah. Good lord. Oh, and also because uh, one of your allies is within five feet of it. So yeah, you get how much damage? 26 on the uh, 13 on of before. So okay, we're so looking at 39. 
Okay, so yeah, that arrow just <sighs> shifted over into the center of his chest, and he just kind of pin cushions to the back of the wagon, and then snaps the arrow snaps as he just falls to the ground dead. That was awesome. And then I move action. I if there are bushes or anything in the back, I try to go go into them. Okay. All right. And with that, you kind of move off to the shrubbery, off to the side of the road, um, off of the lead wagon. A you see a man jump down, wearing scale mail. He kind of pulls a shield off his back. And he pulls out a wand off his belt Caster. and targets targets and I gotta get everybody's names Nisriel does a is he casting a spell with the wand or Yes, he's using Ray of Frost off the wand. Does a 19 hit your armor class? I have an armor class of 12, so yes. How do you only have an armor class of 12? That's what it says. Did you I forget you to put your armor, armor on? It doesn't automatically equip it. Oh, it doesn't automatically equip? Do <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, I am the squishy paladin. <laughs> <laughs> I am the um, paladin um, My adamantian plate has an 18 AC. All right, hold on. Are you wearing a shield? Um, uh, suits a chainmail. I'm updating your character sheet right now. Oh, thanks, Dave. Uh, I don't think you need that sickle. Yeah, if if I as a, a ranger have an AC of 19, you should definitely have more. Okay. I would expect you to have around 22 or 23. So depending. let me look at your inventory here. So you have an 18 from your armor. And then I know I add that to something. Oh, that's your armor class is 18. Okay. Your adamantine plate doesn't have any bonuses, but it does give you the fact that you're now immune to critical hits. Exactly. Uh, why don't you have a shield? Are you a two hand? You wear two, you use two handed weapons. I have two handed weapons. weapons. That's why. Oh. Okay, so your armor class is eighteen. So a nineteen does hit your AC. Yeah. All right. So two D eight. So a beam of blue energy launches out from this this guy's wand and catches you dealing six cold damage. And that... Okay, so I entered a six in the box, then I clicked the damage button. Yep. All right, great, thank you. You got it. And that is his turn. <coughs> And then you see another man he's come off the same wagon dressed in like a red robe holding a staff in his hand. <sighs> and he looks at both Aiden and Adabash, since you guys are kind of close together with your horses. And he waves the staff up in the air and you can see a bead of red energy coalesce around it and launch out. I need you both to make deck saves. I am going to say no. <laughs> uh, uh, I am going to use Magic User's Nemesis okay. as, a, re as a reaction. When I see a creature casting a spell or teleporting within 60 feet of me, I can use my reaction to force a will saving throw. DC 16. Okay, this if is coming from the staff. Oh, it's coming from the staff? Yes. The staff of fireballs. Fantastic. Ooh. Uh, you said deck save, right? Deck yes. Save. 22. 
Oh my god, I keep rolling twos. Ooh. But it's a spell. Aha, I have advantage against spells. Yes, it is still a spell. Is that all spells? All right. So what did oh. you get? I have to double check if I get advantage. I'm not sure. Oh, Rosie, are you the type of paladin that grants uh, bonuses to all of our saving throws too? I I don't think so. It would be a class ability. Oh, if it falls under paladin itself, then probably. Uh... Oh, but you need so you have so you have our protection. So yes. anybody within ten feet of you, which none of you are right now, because she walked up to the wagon, gets a plus four to saving throws. I also have aura okay. of courage. Right. You can't anybody as long as you're conscious, you and friendly creatures within ten feet can't be frightened. And you also have R of the Sentinel. You emit an oh. R of alertness while you aren't incapacitated. Oh, when right, you and yeah. any creatures of your choice within ten feet of your roll initiative, you gain a plus four bonus. <laughs> oh nice. That under my features and traits? Yes, that's under features and traits. Which and comes then you from my oath. Click yeah. on class features. Okay. So yes, I did get advantage because of my mantle of spell resistance, but I still nice. rolled crappy. What did you I roll? I got a 15 total. All right. Well, all you needed was a 15. Oh. It's a staff. It's not a it's not the guy casting it. Okay. So what did you get out of bash? Oh, I got a 22. All right. So 33 halved will be 16 damage. I round down. I will take none of that because of shield master. Nice. Shield master just shield negates master, the damage? Uh, shield master basically effectively gives me evasion. Really? Uh, Very nice. A, I can, anytime I have to make a deck saving throw, uh, I can use my reaction to in interpose my shield between myself and source of the effect, uh, negating it. Nice. All right, so that was your reaction. Yes, that was my reaction. All right. All right. And bear with me for one moment. Well, Aiden's off to a fantastic start. All right. And that was his turn. Um, the three other guys that were prodding the prisoners all kind of converge on Nisriel. So the first one you see pulls out a mace and tries to bludgeon you about the head with it. Missing just kind of crashes into your armor, but you just stand there and take it. And the other two, they seem to work well together. Um, so as they are all converging on you, they seem to fight just a smidge better, gaining advantage. Uh, a 21 and a 21. So the two others do connect with you uh, for five damage each as they just bash you with their bases. Okay. Uh, do I get a chance to react or dodge or any of that good stuff? I mean, that is your armor class. They hit your armor class. Oh, all right, cool. So now on a 14, I believe that is you. Yes, that is Nisriel. I wanted to make sure there wasn't another one. Nope. Uh, rad. Well, I've got my blood axe. Yes, you do. Uh, she half set 
and uh, we're going to try to hit them. And I get two attacks. And I gain a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with my magic axe. Yeah, that should all be accounted for on your character sheet. Oh, do I, can I just click stuff? You can if you want to, if you want to, if you want to roll meat space dice, you're more than welcome. But yeah, you have a plus nine to attack with your axe, with your blood axe. I but mean, yeah, if, if you it click already on the, accounts for that. Yeah, if you click on the plus nine, it'll roll the die for you. I click on the plus nine. So on your character sheet under actions. And then I all. To, I need to close this other thing to do that. Okay. Uh, under actions. Yep, actions. And then you highlight all. It should show you your blood axe. Yeah. And it should have a plus nine hit. It says I have a plus 11. No. Oh, okay. All right. Then you have a plus 11. Cool. Boop. Yes, I didn't ref I did not refresh your character sheet. 20. Uh attacking one of those guys. Yeah, you easily easily hit him. Cool. And then I damage. Let's see how this goes. 9. Uh, and then to creatures that aren't constructs or undead, I can do a 1d6. So yep. it doesn't look like that's accounted for. Yeah, that it doesn't account for in D&D Beyond for some reason. So you can just go ahead and roll that d6. Four. All right, so total of 13. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Cool. Yeah, you and slash it. That's your first attack. That's my first attack. Here we go. And don't forget, you can sack spell slots for smites. Yeah, 23. Oh, that, yeah, you're just like, hack, hack. Fifteen plus three, so uh, 18. Okay, so with your second slice, you just cut through him deeply, and he just collapses, and then you just kick him off your axe. Alrighty, uh, 12. Uh, so another warrior stepping out from back, the back of the wagon jumps down and he pulls out a spear and shield and he starts moving off uh, towards Adabash. So he just strides up to you at this point. That's all he can do this round enough away. Uh, on a 10. Uh, so are there anybody is anybody uh, are they like within 30 feet of them as a giant cluster? Uh, well you have the two guys remaining fighting with Nisriel but Nisriel is also there. Um, other than that you have the two gentlemen uh, the two spellcasters that are close together. And then you have this guy standing in front of you. Uh, what's the biggest cluster that's like within 30 feet of itself? Like, uh, are, are the two clusters of the two guys and two wizards next to each other enough no. that I could do that within? Okay. If it's a spell, you could catch them all. If it, if it's not, like, if you're not worrying about damage in history, oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, well, yeah, no, because I can pick. Okay, then yeah. Okay. You can definitely so get all four of those. I'm just going to position myself right in there. I'll take the hit if he does an attack of opportunity on my way by. But okay. I'll position myself right there. And uh, as a fourth level, I will cast uh, Spirit Guardians around me, which lets me designate number of creatures I can see to be unaffected. So I'll choose, you know, Nisriel and all the slaves, uh, enslaved peoples. Mm -hmm. And I will uh, cast that, which means they have to make a uh, wisdom save. Okay. Uh, he did try to strike you with his spear as you went by. Uh, did a seven? Does a seventeen hit you? It does not. No. All right. So you just kind of duck out of the way, and they need to make uh, wisdom saves. Yes. All righty. Hey, that's an eight. Fail. That is a twenty-four. 
that succeeds. Uh, a four. That does not. And a three. That's not. So one guy gets half damage. Yep. Yeah. So the guy with the staff that shot uh, the fireball mm -hmm. saved. Everybody else failed. Oh, goody. So uh, they get... Uh, 18 or 9 damage. All right. All right. Anything else? Uh, that'll be it. Bonus actions? Okay. And on an 8... Masterful eight. Uh, yeah, this guy that uh hit me with some fire. Don't like him. Want none of it. So I will focus all of my ire on him. Okay. Which is essentially like Hunter's Mark, but not as powerful. Okay. Uh, and I will designate him as my prey. Gotcha. As my bonus action. All right. So the first time I hit him... In a round, I get an extra D6. Okay. And then I will let loose with my bow. All right. Uh, 20 to hit. That will hit. Uh, let's see. Do I like, do I like that three? Hmm. Do I like that three? I have the piercer, uh, feet so i could re-roll it you know what let's re-roll it because three is low yes it is but six is better so that is 12 piercing damage all plus right plus an additional five psychic <laughs> from my bow all right take that wizard man he grunts and like grabs his head with this hand that's not holding the staff as the arrow hits him. Anything so, else? Uh, actually, I am uh, I am going to close the gap. Okay. Uh, so I will throw my. Oh, actually, I get two attacks because I'm yes. you. You do get two attacks. Uh, yeah. So that's a twenty-eight to hit. Oh, that hits. And 11 piercing, which I will take. That's a good roll. And another one psychic. <laughs> and yeah, he, because I totally forgot about my my prey, he gets an, just an additional five. All right. All of the damage. And then I will put my bow away and run in <laughs> as I pull out my sword and run to close the gap. Okay. Ah. Uh, uh, you close the gap, and out of the cart that he jumped out of, or jumped off of, um, out of the back, you see two small dragons leap out. And they oh. see you standing there and try to bite you. Because that's the thing. Uh, Uh, yeah, I don't think a six hits you. Nope. No, I didn't think so. Uh, does a 13? No. That's the other one. Okay. So yeah, they both kind of snap at your ankles and you laugh at them. And back to the top. Widriel on a 31. So uh, who's still standing on the enemy's side? Uh, you have the two gentlemen, one wearing the scale mail and one in the robes, wielding the staff. Um, then you have the guy with the spear and shield. And Who, then the two little two little dragons. Is there anyone that is within five feet of Nisriel? Um, no. Yes, the two thugs, sorry. I will target the one that seems the least injured. 
Um, okay. before, before you expend something doing that, Dave, I messaged you about my improved divine smite. I should have done another 1d8 radiant on top of all of that for each attack. Do you want me to do that or just remember to do it? Um, is it automatic or do you it's have It's automatic to... because I am suffused with righteousness. Nice. You are suffused with righteousness. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so how much extra damage? I should be doing 1d8 radiant damage with each melee attack. Okay. Well, you attacked the one guy, so you killed him. Yes. Oh, so there's only one left. Well, no. I attacked two of them. Oh, wait, no. No, you attacked one guy two times. All right. Continue, sir. Yeah, the other two guys were damaged from uh, the spirit guardians. So yeah, I'll target the other guy that's next to her. Okay, there's two there. So pick, yeah, whichever one. They are the one that looks equally damaged. Whichever. Yep. Fifteen. Uh, that will hit. Will hit for uh, this. So fourteen and sneak attack again because he's five feet away. And less. So that is 14 plus 10, 24 total. Okay. Yeah, you shoot him square in the back and he just and then kind of collapses down on Nisriel and slides off. Bloody, bloody, bloody. All right. So wisdom save from that guy. Uh, does a 25 succeed? It does, which means he takes half damage of hot damn. Okay, there we go. Uh, half of 25. Jesus. Yeah. All righty. All right, and that brings us to his turn. So he will do something, something impressive. Probably not. Um. All right, you see he grabs his chest with his free hand as he sheaths the wand and chants something. And you see his wounds start to close up. Do you see almost all of the damage he has taken so far just heal up? And that is his turn. Um, he will actually walk up to you, Abadish. And then the gentleman with the staff also has to make a wisdom save. Mm -hmm. uh, nine. That is a failure. Okay. Go ahead and uh, give me some damage. And he will take half of 19. Or he will take 19. I mean. He will take 19. Okay. So, yeah. He looks really, really bad. Um, he begins to chant and vanishes. Can I do... Uh, no, well... I will I not use my reaction on that one. An arcana check to see if I recognize the spell. Sure. sure. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Dwayne, you said you were saying? I was going to say, I will not use my reaction to make him not yeah. try that spell. I got a seven. So, you got a seven yeah. total? So yeah, you have no idea what just happened. You know he cast a spell. 
Other than that, you do not know. Uh, the last remaining, what I'm calling a thug, attempts to attack Nisriel. Who? Uh, a six? A six will miss you, Nisriel? Okay. It was a 20 and then went to a two. Mm-hmm. So, odd duck dice favor their creator. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like, I like to, I'm picturing it as they swing think they get it and then they look up and she's just looking down at them <laughs> and that brings us to you Nisriel on a 14 yeah okay blood axe time 21 that will hit 8 on the d12 plus 7 and then I'm rolling the d6 and the d8 uh so 16 damage okay with one chop you bring this foe low can i split his skull in twain yes but you still have you also still have your movement and another attack to use if you'd like uh is there anyone left for me to attack uh you can reach either the warrior with the spear and the shield that kind of went up to abadish abadith Artabash. Artabash. Sorry, I'm looking at the. I'm not looking at the zoom. Um, or you can reach what you clearly know is some sort of uh, cleric or healer of some sort. Oh, we're gonna take out their healer. Fuck okay. That guy. So yeah, you move up to him and swing your axe. Thirty to hit. Uh, that will hit. <laughs> is that a crit? No. Okay, 11 plus... It's a 19, missed by one. Uh, 11 plus 8. 19 damage? 19 damage. Nice. It clearly looks surprised as this dragon board just strides up and drives a large axe into his body. Right uh, between the ribs. So that brings us to a 12, which is that warrior. So he moves up since everybody kind of just walked by him. Uh, and if he walks into the space, he gets to make the wisdom save too. Yeah. Which he will. Uh, a 12. That is a failure, and that is a 28. <laughs> Bear with me for one second. Need to check something real quick. All right. What level did you cast it at? Cast it at fourth level. Okay. So it's doing 48 damage? Yep. Nice. All righty. <clears throat> so he took damage. And then he attempts to bash you with his shield and stab you with his spear twice. All right. So the two spears... Uh, a 21 and a 23 23 is my AC okay and with the shield a 26 nice all right so you take 11 points of damage from the spear and nine points of damage from the shield then you need to make a concentration check yes uh it's a damage right dc 10 or half damage dealt whichever is higher okay that's what a was con. The, what was the damage? Uh, 11 and then 9. So it's just going to be DC 10. Okay, twice. good. Be- because I rolled the base 11. Nice. Oh, twice. Yeah. And, well, I mean, and, then, and then a 16. So yeah. Yeah, it's like if your base is 11, then you, yeah, that's not going to bother you. Yeah. 
Um, I do also need you to make a DC 15. I need you to make a strength saving throw. <laughs> okay. DC 15. <laughs> since I already said it. Uh, yeah, no, that's a nat one. All right. So when he bashes you with his shield, you are knocked prone. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's all. I was very off balance. And then on a 10. Okay, cool. I stand up. Artabash. And uh, you <laughs> said it's just the one guy next to me, or is it uh, that yeah, spellcaster too? He's not next to you. He was clo- He's close enough to be in your R. So right now, the only guy there is the guy with the spear. Okay, uh, I'm just going to cast a uh, level 3 uh, inflict wounds on him. So that's okay. 5 to 10 damage so you after have to, I make a spell attack. Yeah, yeah, you do have to hit him. So that's a 19 plus, uh, that plus 9, it. so that's a 28. Yes. And that's 5d8, or 5d10. So that's uh, 20. All right. He grimaces in pain, uh, but he is still standing there. All right. And then on an 8. That would be me. <laughs> yes. Aiden. Uh, yeah, so by the time I get up to this cart and I pull my, my sword out, you see that it's kind of glowing a little bit. Because beautiful. And then these two dragons jump out. Yeah, they're like small dog-sized dragons. Like, they're not winged. They don't have wings or anything like that. But they are definitely, like, being an experienced dragon hunter, you know that they are dragons. But they are tiny dragons. They are tiny little dragons. Uh, what color are they? Uh, they are modeled. Like, modeled colored scales. Okay. Well, then uh, Aiden will turn and just go, Okay. Vizilipis. Shila. And uh, that will be his, uh, it will be casting as a bonus action and snaring strike at, oh, uh, let's, yeah, we'll just go with first level for right now. I'll pop that right there. And uh, then with my super awesome moon touched short sword plus one, <laughs> I'm going to, Hit the first one closest to me. Okay. Uh, double check my spell. So if I hit this creature, then my ensnaring strike will take effect. So short sword 23 to hit. Oh, that hits. So that is only 13 uh, piercing. Okay. It is a magical sword. Yeah, you stab it. It bleeds. It bleeds profusely. And then my ensnaring strike. Uh, It is merely restrained and cannot move. And if it doesn't get loose, then it takes some damage. Okay. Your second attack? Yes, I am. That one's only a 21. Uh, That will only hit. (laughs) For another 11 piercing. All right. With that strike, it falls limp to the ground. It's blood soaking the earth. The other one glances over like animalistically and then hisses at you and tries to bite you. Oh. Does a 23 hit you? 23 does hit. All right. It deals four damage to your lower calf as it bites you. Ow. And that brings us back up to Widriel on a 31. 
Okay, who's left? Uh, the cleric is still there. Um, the big guy with the shield and the spear, and one of the little like dog dragons, hmm. JoJo sized dragon. Any of my allies within five feet of anybody's standing? Um, yes, the guy with the shield and spear is right next to Artabash. He's my I'll get target. Your, I'll get your name right. He's my target. So All here right. we go. Okay, so why doesn't it show up? Well, is that a six or a nine? I saw a 16. All right, so I got 16 on him. Do I hit with a 16? Uh, you do hit with a 16. I do. Okay. Match time. Okay. My stuff is not showing up anymore. Uh, nine damage. Nine damage plus we're doing sneak. 26 wow. sneak attack. <laughs> 26 plus nine. So 35. 35 damage. He's got to be dead, right? No. He is not dead. <laughs> no. He not grunts loudly and kind of looks back in your direction. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Would you? I keep moving, basically. After okay. shooting, I relocate. Gotcha. To keep them within... Uh, an adequate range to give me a buffer if he does come after me. All right. All right. You see the guy standing in front of <coughs> Nisriel. He chants foul words, and you see his hands start to glow black, and he tries to slam it into Nisriel's chest. Uh, Does he have to make that? Uh, yeah, he's got to make a he's got to make an attack. Yeah. An attack. No, I mean uh, the wisdom save. Uh, he does. Uh, a nat twenty on the die. Oh yeah, that's that's half damage. Who knows? Uh, who knows? Maybe it'd be enough. Uh, it's 20, so 10 damage. 10 damage, okay. He grunts, uh, but he's still standing, and yeah, he slams his chest, or yeah, he slams his chest, slams his hand into Nisriel's chest. Um, that was a 23 to hit Nisriel. Hits. Some ends here. Uh, 20 points of necrotic damage. Jesus. Ow. As he slams his hand in you, basically just casting inflict wounds on you at fourth level. That actually wasn't too bad for fourth level. Just have to look up a spell. I need Nisriel to give me an intelligence save. Where does that live on my sheet? Uh, upper left. Pardon? On the upper left? Yeah, like upper left underneath your name and your strength, dexterity, and con, there should be your saving throw box. Looks like you have a plus five. Oh, uh, you wanted intelligence? Yes, please. Boop. Oh, that didn't work. No! What happened? 
sorry, my character sheet went away, but I know I had a plus five, so I'm going to roll a d20 in the next okay. five. Uh, 16 plus five. Woo, All right. 21. <clears throat> so you feel something begin to invade your mind, and for a brief moment, you see out of the corner of your eye an ogre. Looks like he's about to swing a club at you, and you blink quickly, and it's gone. And that takes us to you, Nisrael, on a 14. Why won't it let me up there? And because this mage is an idiot, uh, you see the mage appear out of thin air. I knew I was looking around. Spell. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> What happens when you cast two concentration spells? One fails. Okay, so this guy's right in front of me. Yeah, you have the cleric in front of you. The wizard's kind of off a bit. He's, he's been pretty annoying. Who, the cleric or the wizard? The cleric. Whoever's yeah. been attacking me. The cleric is the one who just hit you for 20 points of necrotic damage. I think I'm going to lightning breath his face. Nice. I'm just mad at him at this point. So what, is that a deck save? A uh, deck save DC 15. Okay. And that's only one of your actions. So you can still take yeah. your second action as your attack. I know. Uh, okay. What was the DC? 15. Deck save DC 15. <gasps> he fails. He rolled an eight total. Cool. Uh, Actually, there's 11, but he still failed. 19 damage. Nice. Uh, he is still standing there. He's kind of like, his lightning's kind of like arcing across his body. And we probably don't serve the same god. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling the vengeance. Uh, so... Actually, you briefly look like as you're because he did clutch his like an amulet on his chest, and you briefly glance there and hanging there you see is a five headed dragon amulet. Oh, fuck this guy. Ah. Uh, I think it it might be smiting time. Uh, is that under my actions? That would be under my actions. Um. Uh, where are you can just attack them and it adds on to your attack. Oh, right. My, um, I, because I have the improved. Yeah, I'm awake. A uh, blood axe. 19. Uh, that will hit. Eight, and then I add the D8 and D6. Uh, eight, nine, ten. 13, 14, 15, 16 damage. Okay, I'm going to use a famous phrase here. How do you want to do this? He's been pretty annoying. I attempted to electrocute him. Didn't put him down. She grunts. She already had the axe kind of in his chest between his ribs. He was still standing, maybe because she was holding him up a bit on the axe. And she shoves the axe all the way through his chest till it hits his spine and then twists it. Oof. Yeah, with a sickening crack of bone, he just collapses down and falls to the ground. All right. <clears throat> that brings us to the large man who is harassing our artifact. Artabash. Yes, our cleric. Needs to make that wisdom save again. Yep. Let's see if he gets to attack at all. Uh, a ten. That fails. All Twenty-three right. points of damage. All right, he is still up. Mm, good for him. So yeah, a space marine. Fighting a tanky character for sure. 
Uh, he tries to stab you with his spear, and one clearly misses. Uh, 22, which I think you said misses, misses as well, right? And then he does follow through with his shield. Uh, that is a 23. That is good. All right, so nine bludgeoning damage. And I need All you right. to make a DC 15 strength save. All right, uh, I succeed on the con save. Yeah, I figured you would. And uh, yes, I make that strength save this time. All right. And then you see he like, he like, like looks like he kind of reaches within himself and lets out a roar. And you see a bit of the damage that he had heals over. And that takes us to a 10. All right. So, uh, He's not going to be able to heal over this damage because uh, this time I'm casting a fourth level inflict wounds. Okay. And that's uh, 21. That will hit. Okay. So it's eighteen five thirty-three. 33. All right. You, you plant your hand on him and black energy courses through. How do you want to do this? Oh, uh, I will grab him straight by the neck. It courses straight up and his uh, head just desiccates in my hand. Yeah, so you just, you know, and as you drop him, his just like black smoking desiccated head and you see black wisps of smoke as he just collapses there, and then it turns to ash as he hits the ground. Uh, that would be our ranger fellow. So who do we have left? Uh, you have the little ankle biter that's still hiring you, as well as the wizard. And the wizard that was, was the one that came out of uh, yeah, it looked like he guessing just... invisibility. Yeah, he popped out of a popped out of thin air. Boop. Well, he looks pretty banged up. The super fun thing is, I still had my mark on him, <laughs> so probably as soon as he poofs back into existence, I go, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, I will drop my sword and pull out my bow. Okay. And yet again. Give him the old hee-haw. Okay. Um, I believe this is a disadvantage because you are in melee combat with uh, this little it, ankle blader. Yes, it is. But that's okay. Let's see. So that's an 18. Or, all right. So 18 was the lower. To hit? Yeah, that hits. Uh, that's decent damage. That's also decent damage. So much damage. Okay, so 11 piercing from the longbow, plus another four. So 15 total piercing and two psychic. So 17 total? Yep, just on the first attack. All right. How do you want to do this? <clears throat> so I'll drop my sword, pull out my bow, and swing around as my senses go, oh, my prey is here. Pull back, let go as the psychic arrow, because I don't have I don't have arrows. It just happens. <laughs> A arrow of psychic force pierces his mind. And it doesn't even like look it's his body. But it just hits his mind as his head just goes like, like a little like a like a yeah like well not like a, a huge explosion but just like a like if someone just squished a blueberry just, oh just a, yeah all right and with that you feel something try to bite your ankle yeah uh you feel it try it tries really hard but it does not, which takes us to Widgreal. The only thing left alive is this little 
tiny, well, ankle small biter. ankle biting dragon. So Woodriel draws on one of his arrows, cocks it back, and goes, Are we killing the baby dragons? We kill all dragons. As he says that, it goes out. And he's within, or it's within five feet of oh, yeah. him, correct? Oh, yeah. It's just trying right. to bite him right now. 21 to hit. Uh, that will hit. So we have 14 plus 22, 26 total, 36 total. All right. With that shot, how do you want to do this? It, the arrow just flings the bow, flies out all the way to the baby dragon and just lodges itself into his eye going through his skull. And it drops. Yep, and with that, the field is quiet of enemies for you have defeated them all. Aiden just goes, hey, you killed my kill. Sorry. Not fair. Well, you're alive. Well, well I mean, it wasn't maybe really of a, you know. Maybe right. uh, Widriel can owe you one. So, like, when he's about to kill something next, he can be like, "Hey, Aiden," and then he can kill like, this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, first order of business for me is to recuperate any arrows that were not broken. Yep. Wipe the blood off the arrows on the victims. <clears throat> okay, so and... you start, Widrill, you start policing your, your used arrows. They all hit, so it's easy enough to find. I think when you tell, like, the first one I shot broke? Yeah, the very first one you shot broke because it kind of, yeah, it pinned the guy to the wagon, then his weight just snapped it clean. All right. Uh, so you're left there with the bound individuals and the dead bodies of your victims. And with that, we were going to take a quick 10 minute break. Oh, thank you all. And we will be back in 10 minutes. Don't go away. Don't go anywhere.
hello and welcome back everyone uh, to part one of Rise of Pyrescythe, a two-part Dungeons & Dragons 5e adventure. And I see we have a Summon the Elder Gods, just bang my buddy, and I'm excited because this is the first one for me to run. I've been a beneficiary of many, but yes. All right. So what are you all doing at this point? As we left, the slavers were dead and you have several individuals kind of looking at you. Are you, are you setting well, us free? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Do you have anywhere to go? Back home. And back home is where? The village. And he points the way you guys came. <laughs> that village we didn't stop in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have adequate rations to make it to the village. We'll be okay as they start, like, a couple of them start rummaging in the wagons and come out with, like, a sack full of what you imagine to be food. Do you know where they were taking <laughs> you? Yes, to the to the dwarven village. About um that way, about oh. another day. That makes sense. They, sa they said they were going to uh, sell us to Calax to work the mines. Calax. Yes, Calax. That's what they said. That does that spark any? You have, you've never heard of a Calax before. So we can only assume that. These the guards were human. Uh, yeah, one was a half elf. The rest were humans. And well, um, does it look like the ankle biters uh, were they actually baby dragons or were they just tiny? Ask the dragon. Yeah, dragons are my favorite. Yeah, one of, one of my favorite enemies. So these are a breed of dra like a. A subspecies of dragon called a drake. Okay, that's kind um, of what I figured. They are dragons, um, but yeah, but they are tight. They are smaller, flightless, unintelligent. Okay, because if Pyrocyte had actually started reproducing, that was going to be a big problem. Nice. Well, as long as the people we killed are not part of the group known as Carrion Comfort. We are fine because we're being raided. Yes. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Raid. But I look at the people we just slaughtered, let's be honest, and I'm looking for any emblems, coat of arms, signets. Uh, they bear no markings that, yeah, you go over them. But they bear no heraldry, no markings. Um, several of you know, several of them have various tattoos. Uh, but Any nothing... meaning from the tattoos? No, just designs. I look at their teeth. Okay. They are. Are they well kept? Healthy? Uh, so you, you notice that the men that were guarding the prisoners. Uh, generally have not good dental care. Um, looks like they didn't really take too much care. Uh, the larger man, um, his teeth are worn, but still in good, you know, good fashion. Um, what you imagine, yeah, you know, the wizard and the cleric, their teeth are impeccable. Very, you know, very well, both of them very well groomed, well kept. Well, I can only assume that they work for whoever is controlling the Dwarven village now. And they are recruiting slaves. Pretty commandeering. All right. Uh, just stating straight up, Nisriel uh, removes the bonds from these villagers, says a quick prayer for their safety, and asks if... Uh, 
they need help clearing their village or if they'll be fine while uh, our gang goes to take care of uh, the actual root of the problem. We should be okay. They, this was a small raid and we were uh, mostly, most of us are just farmers from the outskirts of the, of the village, you know, the farms to the north. You probably did not see them if you came through the village. Um, but we will be okay. At least right, I best hope. of luck to you. At least I hope we will. Do you think we won't? Oh, you should be fine. We're going to go kill the mole man. We didn't oh, see just... anything on the way in, so you should be fine to head back. Uh, I will go and pick up uh, that. You said it was a staff of fireballs? Uh, it is a staff. Unless you can, it is a staff. You saw a fireball come from it. Until actually... you, until you have a chance to look at it and identify it. Oh yeah, let's frisk the corpses of the evil doers. Is there really any? Yes, of course, of course, you frisk the corpses. Yeah, uh, grab the wand for Artabash. Yeah. So to save time. Valuables. We will go and loot the bodies. Um, there's a handful of gold on them. Nothing really worth, you know, not a ton of gold. <clears throat> Bear with me one second. Pull it up. So <clears throat> the wizard has a spell book. And then he has uh, three scrolls as well as that staff. Hmm. The half elven cleric, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, does anybody cast detect magic? Just out of curiosity. I mean, you know the wand I that he do, has on actually. his belt sure. is magical. Okay. Only one of you needs to cast it. <clears throat> so besides the like the spell book glows, obviously. Uh, the staff does as well with strong evocation magic. The wand also has evocation magic about it. And then you also see that the cleric's armor has a faint glow of abjuration. And to save time, the cleric's armor is scale mail plus one. The wand is a wand of winter. And the staff is a staff of fire. Uh, Nisriel looks at Artabash and uh, asks if they want the uh, TM, the uh, armor of this dead cleric. No, I'm good. I, I <clears throat> pulled my robe aside and you can see this weird like fleshy thing clinging on to me yeah i have living armor that's gross man oh yeah it's disgusting are you just wearing like a meat suit yeah i i am a cleric in a meat suit except it wriggles so you're wearing writhing meat over your meat or you're writhing yes meat. Yes. Writhing meat for my meat suit. Okay. That's creepy. That's why I wear robe over it, man. I know it's creepy. I'm, just, I'm supposed to be a good guy here. Uh, Aiden doesn't take anything uh, of that pile, except for maybe some of the some of the coin. Okay. Uh, doesn't want to be bogged down in the travels. Being that I am a chromatic dragonborn and some of the stereotypes that come with, uh, I very distastefully remove the 
symbol of Tiamat and pocket it in case it becomes useful to sneak in somewhere later. Ah. I'm not thrilled with it, but it would be in the service of Bahamut, so I could forgive myself. Speaking of sneaking in, there are four bodies. There are four of us. Yes, we could potentially take their gear and there. But we would be coming in sleeveless. We could tie these bodies up to the back and said they died along the way. Hopefully they won't recognize their own soldiers. Uh, well, then, if we're really planning on doing this, there is another alternative. Go ahead. Uh, making sure because it's third level spell, I think. Yeah. Uh, I could animate at least one of them. I come back with one slave. Yeah. No, yeah, the animated one could drive the carriage, and we could pretend to be ah uh, cargo. <clears throat> um, merchandise. I would mm-hmm. suggest we wait for nightfall and mm-hmm. scout the village. From a distance first. I think that's a good idea. Still another day away, right? Yes. yes. You still have another day to go before. All right. So you settle down for the night? Away. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The, the fortress is up, right? Mm-hmm. Fortress of Solitude. I mean, I think this is probably about the time we stop wanting to use the fortress and start using our rations. Yeah, we're getting a little close. So maybe we find somewhere in the trees a little bit off the path and sleep in shifts. All right. I'm for this. All right. Who, what are the, what is the watch order? I'll take the first watch and I'll climb up the tree as high as I can to get a good view. All right. Who is after? Well, I should say. So you guys settle in. You eat, uh, sleep. Woodrill, you're on watch. Who do you wake up? Uh... You're getting tired. It's getting later in the you know, it's almost about midnight at this point. Mm, I'll wake up, uh, Aiden. Okay. All right, Aiden. You're up. Your watch is also uneventful. Who do you awaken? Uh... Israel. All right, Nisrael, mm-hmm. you are awoken. It's your watch. It is your watch. Mm-hmm. Make a perception check for me. Actually, what is your passive perception? 11. Okay, give me a perception check as you look out amongst the foliage and the trees. I uh, rolled a five. Okay, and then add your perception to that. Or is that total five? That was total. That was, yeah, that was oh, total of five. That was your total, not a, you rolled a five plus. Gotcha. Not my best of rolls. Oh, yes, I see. It's a plus one modifier. Okay. So. I am the most perceptive I've ever been. Yes. So you think as you're looking out into the darkness, 
you think you see a pair of eyes for a second. And then you're like, no, that's that can't be. And then maybe about this far from your face, you see a pair of smoky gray eyes open up and a row of smoky gray teeth start to appear as this large shadowy dragon-like shape takes form out of the darkness and launches its mouth at you before we started the game i asked if screaming was a free action and you said yes, yes. screaming is a free action okay <laughs> Nothing in particular, just probably a sound of shock. So, somehow, this thing launches out, and maybe because it was too close to you, it snaps its mouth shut. And you're like, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. And it's about that far to your left as it draws its head back. And roll for initiative. And everybody else, give me perception checks. 21. Perception checks as in the skill, or are we talking passive here? Uh, what is your passive? Uh, my passive perception is 19. <clears throat> okay, so you get awoken by the screen. <laughs> You're a very light sleeper. 15, you also start to rouse. You hear Nisriel screaming. <clears throat> I have an 18. Same. You are awoken by Nisriel scream. Uh, you rolled a 21 for initiative, Nisriel? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not looking at the Zoom, so... Oh, I haven't been putting it in the Zoom. So you no, I'm, like, I'm not looking at your face, so if you were nodding, I can't see it. I was nodding. Yeah. All right, uh, everybody roll initiative. Me again? I roll initiative no, again? Not you, everybody else but you. 23. All right. Nine. Nine. 13. 13, okay. So on a 23, you begin to rouse. Um, you can take one action. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. At why is she screaming? Give me a perception check. Perception. Because you're not sure why she's screaming. You don't see anything. You just see... You're looking around out into the darkness. Uh, 18. 18? Yeah, you don't see anything at the moment. Why are you screaming? And 21. Israel. Uh, I... I think she probably reflexively like snaps at it, uh, which would be an unarmed strike, I guess. Yeah, you don't actually have biting teeth, uh, but you can oh. certainly bite for like a point of damage uh, well, plus if, strength if modifier. If that's not, if I'm not picturing that correctly, then probably blood axe comes up. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Twenty nine. Oh, that hits. So yeah, Widriel, you're like, what are you screaming? Yeah, why are you screaming? And you see Nisriel just swing at the darkness and then her axe just stops and you see like wispy bits of smoke kind of like blow oh. out from where the axe landed. 19 okay. damage. Okay, so you swing and you feel like a lot of that didn't really catch, um, but you did do some damage. So you said 19? Yeah, some of it was radiant, some of it was necrotic. Oh. How much was radiant? Uh, four. Okay, so it takes all of that. And how much was not radiant? The rest of it was not radiant. So 15. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of the, you know, about half the damage that you did that was not radiant did not get through. Um, and with that, it like, like roars up and you can see this thing take shape. It is a large, it's probably about twice the size of the Unisrael dragon, but it's like 
very wispy and shadowy. And as it breathes out, it's this like black cone of flames that just washes over the group of you. I need everybody to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, I'm so glad that I'm laying on the ground. This is uh, purely 32. For how close At is 20. Israel to the rest of us? What's that? How close At is 20. Israel oh. to the rest of us? This is Israel to the rest of you? Probably about 15 feet. Okay. So I got a 32 on my deck save. Got a nat okay. 20. And I believe you have evasion, so you'll take no damage. Uh, 24. Okay. Well, I'm so glad that I get to roll with disadvantage. 12. Yeah, if you're on the ground, it is disadvantage. 19. You are fine. Well, you are fine as in you made the saving throw. All right. So those of you who succeeded uh, beating an 18, so 18 or higher, you take, my brain can't do, all of a sudden my brain cannot do math, 28 points of necrotic damage. Uh, those of you who failed take 56 points of necrotic damage. Whoa. As this thing just breathes this black flame across all of happens you. happens when you sleep. <laughs> And then I would have passed if I was awake. It is to a 13. Who had a 13? Me? I think that was you. Yeah, I believe that was you. All right. So I have no armor. I am not armed. We are off to a fantastic start. Uh, but nevertheless, I will pick up my bow that was laying next to me. Okay. Um, as my bone, actually, can I see this thing? Like, is it? Yeah, now that it has roared up and just breathed this blackish, like, shadowy fire across all of you, you can all see this thing. Okay. So I will stand up so that I can not get killed. Uh... Mm, what do we want to do? So I will choose it as my prey for my bonus action because I can see it. So do some more damage. However, I'm not going to do damage right away. I'm going to activate my hunter's sense for my action. Okay. Choosing this thing. I immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities, resistances, vulnerabilities, and what are and what they are if it's not hidden. Okay. So, well, it is not hidden right now. That's, yeah, that's... you can see it. <clears throat> um, you know that this thing has resistance to damage that isn't for psychic or radiant, as long as it stays within uh, dim light or darkness. Aha. Dim light or dark. All right, I will. Shout that out. They create some fire, create light. It fears the light. And that's my turn, like getting up, grabbing my bow. <laughs> I don't have nothing else to do. And Betty has boosted Betatharius, the shadow dragon. All right. And that moves us to a nine. That's me, right? That's you, Artabash. Okay. Uh, so then with that, I will, uh, since it's the best light spell I have, cast light. Okay. Uh, Where do you cast, what do you cast it on? Uh, I will cast it on one of my gloves. Okay. And run up to said dragon so that it at least is covered in light. Uh, <laughs> and then I will cast spiritual weapon as bonus action and i'll cast it at uh fourth level so it'll do uh 3d8 per time it hits 
All right. As you run up to it, mm -hmm. uh, you move through. It's it will take an attack of opportunity on you. Wait. Because it's got a 10-foot you... reach, so you enter and then... No, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Oh. All right, so you cast Spell. Yes. Uh, so I cast the Spell, and then it will make a uh, melee attack on this dragon. And... Oh, my fault. Uh, Dwayne, you also know it has immunity to fire and resist necrotic damage. Okay. Just in case that changes anything that Artabash is doing. Uh, no, because this is force damage. Nice. So it's doing 18 plus 9, so a 27. Is there a save or just 27? It's, it's a to hit. Attack spell. Got yeah. you. All right. It roars. And as you approach it with the light, you can see like some of the wisp, the shadowy substance of this thing kind of like peel back a little bit. Ooh. And then we are at the top. Oh, well, it it hits, so I still have to yes. roll damage. Oh, uh, I thought you I thought you did. What did you roll to hit? It's spiritual weapon. I rolled an eighteen, so it did oh. twenty. It was twenty seven to hit. Okay, I thought that was your damage. My yeah. apologies. I oh. healed the dragon. Yeah, uh, I mean, it probably is gonna I just take maybe, it back. Maybe on. not. Uh, it's fifteen twenty. Uh, so twenty five instead. Jesus, what level did you cast that at? Cast it at uh, fourth level, so it's uh, it was my last fourth of the day. Man, forty-eight damage or three D eight. Three D eight damage, and I just rolled really quick. Wait, maybe I cast. Well, spiritual weapon fourth second level. level. No, sorry, right. sorry, that's uh, one less, so minus five, so only twenty. Okay, one too many die. All right. <laughs> But then we are up to Widriel. Yeah, your weapon just hits it. What kind of, uh, what is your spiritual weapon look like? What is your spiritual weapon? It's usually uh, it's your deity's favored weapon. So you follow Bahamut? Yes. So probably a long sword or a scimitar to represent the claw. I would so say I, a scimitar then. But yes, Widriel, you're in a 20. Hawk and arrow. Okay. And try my best to shoot center mass. And it's next to Nisriel, right? Yeah, it's next Is to it... Nisriel and Artabash. So within five feet? Mm hmm All right, so here we go. And we got 21 to hit? Uh, that will hit. Okay, so an initial 10 damage plus 24, 34 total. All right. Do I see it do any damage or just do nothing? No, it did damage, especially because of um, the light spell currently being, you know, thrown in its face by Artabash. All right. Uh, 21. Oh, I'm sorry, Widger, did you have anything else you wanted to do? Uh, no, I just moved to try to be in its flank. Okay. And yeah, pass. All right. Nisriel. Um, I'm considering Moonbeam, but that's only a dim light. Do you, would that So dim light would still leave it with its um, ability to resist damage. Well, in that case... I'm but not. right now, there is a light spell being supplied by Artabash that's taking that away. So if I cast that at third, it would be 3d10, or mm -hmm. I could use... Also, is Moonbeam radiant damage? Yes. Yeah, so it would take all that anyway. I think it's, I think it's radiant. Let me double check. Yeah, it is. Oop, yes. So I've got that, or I can use my devotee sensor, which is like 2d8 radiant. But I also, I don't want to heal it. <laughs> At the start of each of your turns, you and any cre other creatures in the incense each regain 1d4 hit points, which to me means including my enemies. 
Yes, including your enemies. Then let's moonbeam this sucker. Okay. Wow. Yeah, just you just see this beam of moonlight. And I'm going to cast it down. at a third level. <clears throat> okay. Uh, boop. That's not great. 13? 13. But I mean, it takes all of it. Damage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it roars as you just call down this radiant beam of moonlight upon it. Um, and that else? is a concentration spell. Um. So can you just keep hitting it with the moonbeam then? For up to one minute, I guess. Yeah, so you can just keep calling down beams of moonlight to damage this thing if you'd like to. Sure. Just let me know how you'd like that to work. Well, just every turn you concentrate on the spell and you can then make another spell attack. So does that count as one of my attacks? Do I get another one? No, that would count. Your spell counts as all of your. It counts as an action, not an attack. All right. So you can make two attacks per action in combat. You basically have one action for like for combat. You just get the ability to make two attacks for that one combat action. Casting a spell takes the whole combat action. Then I call down a silvery beam of moonlight and I'm done. All right. So it recharges its breath. And it, it sees no reason not to breathe on all of you again. No. Uh, everybody give me deck saves. What's the radius? It is a 30-foot cone. So if you moved, you are probably outside of it right now. That was my question. So yes. I don't need to roll? Yeah, you do not need to roll because you are not in range. All right. Well, uh, okay, <laughs> so... You are to bash your standing right in front of this thing. Yeah, no, I was gonna say Nisrael is right in front of it too. So yeah, Nisrael, Artabash, and Aiden, I believe, all need to make saving yeah. throws. Yeah, Aiden's about to die. Seventeen. Okay. Uh, Twenty-four. Thirteen. All right. So Aiden and Nisrael take fifty-six necrotic damage as this thing just breathes upon you. How bad are you hurt? How much damage was it? 56. 5, 6. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can see death. Uh, okay. I'm now at 63 hit points. Meh. Okay. I, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. And you Do took worry. half of that. I only took half of it? No, Artabash took half. Oh, no. It, you said it was dex. Right. Yeah. Did you choose to use your reaction to snap yes. your shield into place? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. With that, it backs away. Um, Nisrael, you can make an attack of opportunity as you, if you like, as this thing sure. backs away from you. Uh, can I moonbeam it again? No, you have no? to attack it. Attack it. Uh, well, then I will attack it with my blood axe because okay. that gets the included. Uh, Radiant damage. Uh, I Actually, can... no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my... I don't know. I don't want to heal it. But the... Well, put it this way. You, ha you have... Yeah, I was like, you have your blood axe out in your hands. Yeah. So you would have to use that to make I don't the attack know if opportunity. The I don't think a 14 hits. A 14 total does not hit this thing. You swing at it as it backs away. And then just fades into the shadow. It, it fades into the shadow and darkness. Uh, I at it. I have a question. Does yes. uh, my spiritual weapon get its own separate attack of opportunity or no? No, spiritual weapon does not get attacks of opportunity. Okay. And that oh. takes us to a 13, which is Aiden. I just oh, I'm just doing a regular attack. Oh, yeah. And and uh sorry. Wait, am I going or wait, is no, it I'm just no, making I'm, sorry. My, I'm just making my attack of opportunity still. Uh oh, okay. Does a uh 17 hit? It does not. Okay. Sorry. Uh then on a 13, which I believe is Aiden. 
Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I don't feel too good. I got you. Don't worry. Well, if you say you've got me, then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna trust you. Uh, so I will, I will lift my bow. Okay. My arms are probably still on. Smoky you can no fire. longer, you can no longer see this thing. Uh, you would need to give me a perception check <clears throat> to try and find it. I will perceive. Okay. I will perceive the darkness. All right. 15. Okay. Yes, you do not see it. Try as you might. You look around and you cannot see this thing. Mm. You could ready if you'd like or do something else. Uh... Nope, nope, nope. Hold on. I know I can do this. I can do it. Where is it at? And we lost our oh, rest. you son of a... Uh, I always forget about that. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm going to back up Okay. until I feel that I'm out of range, because I do have a, my bow is, has very long range, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. From where, from where the dragon was before, if it was to reappear there, you are outside of the breath weapons range. Oh, Okay. Uh, well, then I, I will ready my I will ready my attack action. So when you ready my bow, yeah, you get you'll get one attack. Yep, and it takes us to Artabash. Okay, so now how far away is Aiden from me? Uh, probably about forty feet behind you. Okay, well then I will just use uh, uh hey, guess what? Have 70 health. Cast heal. Yeah, since that's the only thing I can actually do ah. within range of you. I mean you could move and cast healing word. Hey, I, I have 20 feet of movement. And yeah. it yeah. <laughs> In order for me to make it an effective healing word, I'd have to cast it like fifth level. I was planning on running over just and just cast mass healing word and heal everything. Yeah, but not everyone's... Well, actually, how bad is everyone hurt? Uh, I know... Um, I'm good. Have you been hurt at all? Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nisriel's down almost half. So 63 hit points left. Eh. But Nisriel's a tank. Yeah, why not? I'll make it mass healing word and heal them both. I mean, okay. it's, it's going to be instead a, of this instead in, of the in, seventy in, point instead heal. Of, yeah, instead of the seventy point heal, I'll do uh, three day plus twelve and give you seventeen plus twelve, uh, twenty nine health. And let's see, that's an action. A bonus okay. action. I can't. Can I see where the uh, dragon is at all? Uh, no? Give me a perception check. All right. Uh, if I move in the direction that it went first, it's a uh, twenty feet uh, bright, twenty feet dim. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to see it if I move in its direction at all? You would still need to make a perception check. Okay. Uh. Oh yeah. No. No. That's like okay. twelve. Yeah. Did you decide? Did you move out? Uh, I moved towards where it went. Okay. So, well, you had to back... What's the range on Healing Word? Healing Word's like 90 feet. Okay. So, yeah, you move out your 20 feet. Mass and, Healing Word, I should say. You know, you're, like, holding your hand out there, uh, but you do not see this thing. Okay. 
Uh, that takes us back up to Widriel. Okay. It's not much I could do other than shoot. Uh, so I will keep. I we can see it now, right? No, you can no but longer still, see this thing. No longer see it, right? Can I nope. hear anything? No. You would have to give me a perception check. It's basically, it's hidden. It's stealthing. How high are, how, how, how high is the grass where we are? Uh, like or there's ankle, like flat land. Ankle. Like, ankle. like ankle high. I mean, you moved off the side of the road into some trees, so it's, you know, it's a little overgrown here. And we don't see any disturbance you know, it's flying, right? It could be. So I'll, I'll try a perception check just in case. Okay. Go ahead and give me a roll. 28. Okay. You're looking around. Like at first you start where it was, and then you kind of start scanning around, and you see it off to your right. It looks like it was trying to creep around and come towards you. I shoot it straight okay. out. Okay. Roll. And this time I do not get sneak, right? No. Because it's not close to anyone. Right. All right. And I get a 23 to hit. Uh, that hits. And 11. All right. All right. So you fire off and you see the arrow like nick it and kind of bounce off. Oh, so uh, the arrow doesn't pierce? No, it hits. And you know it like some of the smoky substance of it kind of like wisped off when you hit it. But the arrow didn't stick into it. Okay, because I could have tracked the arrow. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so now I do notice it's coming my way, right? Yes. Like, it looks like it was creeping around towards you. All right, so what I'm going to try to do is I will go prone, and hopefully there's enough grass for me to go stealthy into. Okay. I believe you can hide as a bonus action. I do believe so, yes. Being a rogue, so go ahead and roll that stealth. Stealth, stealth. Where are you, stealth? 25. Okay. All right, and that will bring us to Nisriel. You all heard the twing of a bowstring, and you look, and you saw Widriel fire off into the trees. Okay. Uh, then I would like to redirect my moonbeam towards okay. where it looks like. Uh, give me a shot. perception check to see if you notice this thing. It's... Widriel saw it. Thirteen? You do not see it. Can I still redirect it in like the area where the arrow fell or went? It just went off into the trees. So I can't see. There's no arrow like sticking out of like thin air or anything like that. Okay. Well, I mean, is there um, an arrow sticking out of a tree or anything like that? Nope. Okay. Um, well, um, then. How so big is your moon? What is the, like, how big is the moon beam? Is it just like a tiny how moon beam? Is, how big is my beam? Hold is it on. like a flame strike where it just like hits like 40 feet wide? It has a cone. Um, oh, so it's like coming out of your hand. Okay. Oh, no, no. Moonbeam? Yeah. Just yeah, that's straight down, man. Five foot radius, 40 yeah. feet high. Yeah. Okay, five foot it radius. Is, yeah, so it's, it's basically like a just a cylinder beam. of death. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like if it was bigger, I'd say like you could target the area and roll with yeah. disadvantage. Oh. But since uh, it's just a five foot little, you know, it's a cube. Can I cast C invisibility? Uh, you can. Do you think that would be helpful? It is not going to help you because it's not invisible. It's literally just hiding. Oh, all right. Well, then I'm it's being ro It's being a rogue dragon. Then I'm going to look at my Healy Paladin things and see if I can do anything to help anyone. Okay. Oh, uh, also, uh, you, I, were, you were I healed. Want... Sorry? By, you were healed by Artabash. 
for how much Artabash? 29, I believe it was. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Um, I uh, I could And Lupine Vendetta is correct. It's a five yeah, foot radius, foot. not a ten it, it's ten yeah. foot diameter. Yeah, ten foot diameter. Uh, I could utilize my aura of the sentinel. Uh, when you and any creatures of my choice within 10 feet roll initiative, we all gain a plus four. Or I could give us a bonus to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. But well, I your, your auras are automatic. As long as everybody's within 10 feet of you, they get oh. those bonuses. Oh, all right. So, like, if you stay within, like, if you stay within 10 feet of everybody, like, they'll get those bonuses to saving throws. Okay. You just exude these auras that help people. Well, then I'm just awesome, and we should all be thankful for that. But what are you doing on your initiative right I, now? I don't know if there's anything really relevant that I can do. Um, and you could make a, you failed your perception check. Um, I mean, you have spells you could heal if you have any healing spells. I do. You could, have... you could hold and potentially wait to make an attack. I'll hold. If it comes near you. Now, you wouldn't be able to move an attack. So, like, if it came up to try and bite you, then you could attack it. Holding um, is very situational. I'll hold. Okay. And Lupine's right. You do also have your uh, lay on hands if you wanted to use that. Yeah, but our cleric seems on top of that. Okay. So I'm um, I'm just gonna hold. And All right. Hopefully, smite something. All right. And that moves us to Aiden. Uh, so I didn't see anything. No. Hmm. Could I try and perceive again? Yes. You may try to perceive. Uh, I do not see it. Okay. However... Let's get creative here. <laughs> Let's get creative. Hold on, I need to read this real quick. I need to find out if I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How far can I do this? 30 feet from me. Uh, sure. Um, 30 feet from me in the general direction <clears throat> uh, that the arrow was fired. Mm -hmm. I will, <laughs> I will cast speak with plants. Okay. And I will say, if anything heavy stomps on you, grab it. <laughs> which, re which, re idea. which really just makes it difficult terrain, but <laughs> Well, you can't speak with plants, right? I can. I'm yeah. using it right now. No, but I mean, you're speaking. They can't really grab anything. They tell you that. Can't grab. Oh, it turns difficult terrain caused by plant growth into, oh, into ordinary terrain. Blah. I was going to speak with plants, just let you talk to them. Did someone step on you? <laughs> yes. Aha! <laughs> it's over there! Give me an intelligence check, Aiden. <laughs> Two. Okay. So you hear Aiden shout, it's over there. <laughs> and points. Uh, then we go to Artabash. 
Okay. Uh, so, Aiden, how bad are you still? Uh, oh, 32 out of 115. 32 out of 115. Okay, so uh, I will uh, burn a second level healing word on you to give you another... Uh, hold on. Uh, to give you another... So that's another 13 health. And then I'm going to run over to where uh, about Aiden had said it's over there. And mm -hmm. I'm going to pull out my gem of brightness. Okay. And in the general direction of where he said, uh, I'm going to expend five charges and it's going to make a 30 foot cone of okay. blinding light. Okay, so you cast what spell? I, I pulled out a gem of brightness. Well, no, did you heal Aiden? Yes. With what spell? Uh, second level healing word. Okay, so healing word, that was a bonus action, okay. Yeah, bonus so, action. You pull out the gem, and you shine it out there, and you don't see anything. I don't think it's there. But also, uh, can I, let's see, can I make it do the other part too? The grass has lied to us. Someone's stepping on me. <laughs> Pretty sure speak with plants lasts a little while, right? Uh, double check. Ten minutes. Yeah. Someone's stepping on us now. You hear. <laughs> from what direction <laughs> is just all of the grass that we're standing on yelling we're being stomped on mm -hmm. oh wonderful <laughs> plants have no concept these grass would not have a concept of direction nor time stupid grass hey you rolled a two on your intelligence check Oh, and can I do a perception roll to see if I see it after I've done this? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that's a, a 12. Yeah, you do not see it. We're doing great on this. Yeah. So at this point, I'm just going to say that you wait and like you're all like percepting and looking around for this thing and you can't seem to find it. You're not sure, but it may have gone away. So it depends on how long you guys want to keep this, you know, keep your red alert status up, for lack of a better term. Uh, but well, I'm... it goes from like a minute, like you, your your spells start fading. I'm I'm gonna just use another command word on that gem and it's just gonna be bright light and 30 feet so that okay. we can at least gather around all right yeah so you're all gathered there unless anybody no i i stay in the grass and i essentially use them as bait to see that's fair okay how long do you wait i am wrong i can stay there forever okay Give me a constitution saving throw. Like how, like I'm talking like we're going into the pro like progression of like you didn't get much sleep yet. So like oh, okay. how many hours are you staying awake before I, you? I, think I have that. 11 on my constitution save. Okay. I, I honestly figure that after, you know, it's done this, we can just say screw it and, you know, use that cube, the uh, fortress because obviously we've been spotted. If it's still here, it's just waiting for us to lose our composure. If it's not, it's already told somebody else that we're here. So why bother with the secretive method of camping? Eh? Yeah, I mean, that's up to you guys. I mean, or we set up the fortress as a decoy. 
Either way, Aiden spends a minute constructing a little bush hideout. Somewhere where he can lick his wounds. Okay. So what are you guys, what are you doing? Are you setting up the fortress as a decoy and trying to hide? Well, how long has it been now since the last sighting? Like, I'll say at this point, like before your constitution check, it was probably 30 minutes since anybody has seen it, since you guys saw this thing last. And to the best of my knowledge, from this moment, when is sunrise? Do I see the moon? Do I? Yeah, the moon is there. It's getting low. Um, it's probably another four, uh, about three hours till sunrise. It was literally towards the tail end of Nisriel's watch. I will be. No, I'm steadfast. I will stay where I am, keep watch. So basically, try to see if I can spot it until sun rises. Okay. We'll what is everybody else doing? Set up the uh, fortress and wait inside as bait as I'm relaxing do you sleep uh i'll wait an hour and then i'll sleep so that way i'll actually technically have had a full rest right that's excellent i am hiding in the i am hiding in the bush sleeping all right perception rolls (laughs) with my plus 10 to stuff (laughs) okay uh, give me a stealth check. And uh, Nisriel, what are you doing? Once our cleric sets up the uh, fortress, um, Nisriel mutters, but goes inside to try and get some sleep. Um, because they were just awake on their watch. Uh, And the other two members of their party haven't resurfaced, so presumably they're keeping watch. Okay. And you wanted to make a perception check, Woodrow? Uh, If it's possible. Yeah, go ahead. 25. Okay. Uh, you do not spot the dragon. Um, you find, yeah, you see some small game, squirrels in the trees, stuff like that, as you're just laying there. As still All as right, can be. So at first break of light from the sunrise, I'm not, I'm not waiting for the sun to be out. Like when mm-hmm. I start seeing it coming out, mm-hmm. is when I'll get out of my spot and go join them. Okay. All right. So do you... Yeah, I guess it was the the last question of... The last watch was supposed to be... Aiden? Artabash. 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 Did you go out on watch Artabash, or did you just go to sleep? Oh, just go to sleep. Okay. We're in a a fortress. We're good. Well, you are, and so is this real. Also... Aiden's got a plus 10. He's good. Yeah. Also remember that I have a short bow of warning. So mm-hmm. if at any time something happens, I will be informed by the bow. Yeah, it'll glow. All right. So the you waited until day, you know, first first light, and you head back, you head into the fortress. Yep. Um, you see Nisriel and Artabash are sleeping. Um, you're not really sure. You're not sure where Aiden is. You didn't really look for him. You were hiding. Oh, he's not in here. No, he's not in the fortress. I'll go as back you out. look in. Uh, give me a perception check as you walk out. Hold but, on. Let me let me roll my stealth. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you rolled it already. 
No. And I get to roll it with advantage. 26. Uh, that would be 32. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do not spot Aiden anywhere. <laughs> All right. I can't see him, but I crouch. Okay. Aiden. You hear a you hear a bush answer you. Uh. I go towards the bush. <laughs> <laughs> you just Aiden. see me like half asleep, uh, just waking up in a bush. All right, come on, get in the fortress. Is it time to go? It's time to rest. All right, come on, and I help him out up if if he needs it. And- I carry him if he, he, well, if it's a gigantic cobalt, no, but yeah, I help him out. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like dying, but I'm, I'm worse for wear. All right. So the two of you enter the fortress. Um, what are you doing? Do you bed? Do you sleep? If we're, yeah, if we're not taking off right away, I will go back to sleep. Well, yep, yeah, when you, when you walk in, when the two of you walk in, Aiden, you see that both Artabash and Nisriel are sound asleep in their cots. So inside the fortress, how, what's the setup? Well, it's 20 by 20, so it's not very spacious. But Artabash can pretty much set it up to have, you know, a number of cots, more than likely like some sort of cooking fire, like a chimney with a yeah with a cooking fire and that's pretty much about it is there any way for us to see outside uh there are arrow slits yes there, there's and it is slits. and okay. it is multiple and it is multiple floor there is at least two floors okay that's good plus the roof which is probably like a parapeted the way i imagine it's like a parapeted roof so there's arrow slits on the first floor second floor and then up on the top, yeah, roof portion, it's parapeted. It's All like right, a small, perfect. squat, little 30-foot high tower. All right, I take a rest, and I take out my bow, and I take a rest with my bow in hand. Okay. Just to be clear, the bow glows. It does not, like, vibrate or anything. Mm. So yeah, if you're sleeping, yeah, I got you. All right, uh, so Aiden, are you also sleeping? Oh yeah. Okay. So Artabash and Nisriel, you wake up early morning to the sound of Aiden sleeping, as well as Widriel. Um. No taking as long as we can for rest yeah and le- until i am woken up i am not moving <laughs> right. mm-hmm. yeah. well that's yeah that's what i'm asking this Nisri- like what are nisriel and artabash uh, doing at this point because you so, are you are rested and the other two your other two companions are sleeping so it does say here in the item it says mm-hmm. that uh the the, the bow so the mm-hmm. weapon magically awakens you and your companions within range if any of you are sleeping naturally when combat begins. Okay, cool. cool. Um, Nisriel looks at Artabash and asks if we should make the most of the daylight or if we should hunker down for the day and the night and then go the next morning. I think we should make the most daylight when uh, the other two get up to let them sleep don't wake them uh let them finish their nap i mean they can't take too much longer uh she sort of shifts back and forth a little bit and uh sits down to clean her weaponry or armor um maybe go to the top of the fortress to see if she can see anything. Um, Essentially sort of a lax watch with the assumption being that they're fairly safe, but they're pretty obvious. I mean, you are at least off the road and like under some tree cover. 
So the trees are providing you at least a little bit of... Well, yeah, but Smokey probably told his friends. Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm. So she'll let them sleep for at least another two hours. If they're not up by then, she'll nudge them away. Uh, roll me a perception check, please, Nisriel. And what is Artabash doing? Uh, Artabash is going to prop himself up by one of the arrow slits and take a look out as he uh, feeds his armor. Nice. Uh, what did you get, Nisriel? 18. What do you feed your armor? Blood. You don't know. You're upstairs. You're up on the roof while he's doing No, that this. was a player question. Yeah. Uh, it, it's technically your hit dice. Ew. So I don't get full hit dice with this armor. I get half. It's it's cursed armor, but I mean... I rolled an 18. Okay. <laughs> so as you're looking out, you know, it's still morning. Like the sun is rising. Um, you can see a small shape up in the air getting closer, coming from the direction of the village. Which village? Where you're heading, the Dwarven village. I has Javelin of Lightning. Okay, I mean, it's it's really <laughs> far away. It's Don't like know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like if you were seeing, like, a low-flying, like, a plane that was flying low. Like, it's not super high up, but it's not, like, flying to avoid your radar. But, yeah, you just see it, and it looks like it's slowly getting bigger. And then it kind of like looks like it does a turn and starts heading back that way, back towards so the surveillance, village. Surveillance, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so nothing new, really. Um, uh, oh, she'll keep an eye, and she's also. I wish I had done this before, but um, uh, I can set alarm as a spell set an alarm against unwanted intrusion i choose an area oh it can only be 20 like a 20 foot cube yeah uh, uh so for yeah. this it would basically be like the first and second do, floor like a half of the uh, can basically I would be do the cube it outside yeah. of like the main fortress entrance yeah, if you yeah, want to, the front door. Probably it's well fortified enough. That yeah, sure. Simplest. Uh, I just I do that, so we got something. Okay. All right. So Aiden, you wake up. It's probably like noon by the time you wake up. Um, you did get some sleep outside. Woodrill is still asleep at this point. It is. The sun is high in the noon sky. What benefits have I gotten from that sleep? Uh, you're healed. Was that is that a long or short? You get the benefits of a, like everybody has gotten the benefits of a long rest. Um, okay. As long as you continue to let Widrio sleep, he will also get the benefits. If you wake him up, he's actually going to take a level of exhaustion. Oh, I, I will let him sleep as I know that he was awake when I was not. So yeah, as long as nobody wakes Widriel, it is about 3 p.m. when Widriel finally rouses from his slumber. So you have a bit of daylight left. So I wake up, go to the common room. All right. Thank you for letting me sleep. I appreciate it. So now what? Here we continue on. We might be able to make it to outside the town if we hurry before nightfall. It was still about a day's travel. Okay, so we'll only get halfway there. I have no objections to this. We would be arriving at night. So it would be advantageous. Well, to a certain degree, I mean, we did been attacked by a 
shadow something last night. So we need to be on our guards for that. I mean, we know it's not dead, so. Yeah. Mr. Yol, do you tell anybody about what you saw? Yes. She frames it in that uh, something came flying uh, from where we're headed to. Didn't get really close, but they were keeping an eye on us. And um, so now we need to assume that they know we're coming. Well, I could protect us from prying eyes once we get a little bit closer. What do you mean? I have the ability to pass without trace. What does that do? It gives everyone that I say a plus 10 to their stealth uh, within wow. 30 feet. Yeah, pass all the trace is pretty good spell. Yeah, can't be tracked except by ma magical needs or means. Oh, Ooh, nice. I'm considering non-detection for the duration you hide a target that you touch from divination magic. Uh, target be willing or unwilling. Uh, no larger than 10 feet. Uh, the uh, target can't be targeted by any divination or perceived magic. It would just allow me to do one. And unfortunately, I have two spell slots left at that level. Well, you got all your spell oh. slots back because yeah. you got a full rest. Oh, lovely. Yep. That is um, a good point. Just hit the long rest button. Non-detection really um, wouldn't be a benefit right now. That okay. would be like that would be something you'd want to cast if you were more worried. You were more concerned about scrying, like somebody scrying you through like a crystal ball. But that's the thing, right? We can't like sure we're not being magic. scried on. Yeah, it's just one of those things like pass without trace would be better in terms of like if somebody's tracking you like mundane tracking or magically tracking. Okay. Yeah, now detection is very good. Like if you were like, oh, we left that wizard alive, you know, maybe he's scrying us with a crystal ball. Sounds good. Stuff like that. So, so you set out. Well, There's before that, if I can go to the roof, yep. like completely on the top. Can, can we see the village from here? No. Okay. It's still over a day away. All right. So here we go. Okay, Anybody so. else want to do anything before you leave the fortress? I redon my armor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that my AC is higher than 13. <laughs> Always good. Always good. All right, so you head out. It's uneventful. Do you camp for? Do you stop when it gets dark? Because you only had less than a half day's march before it darkens again. Uh, I would say, if anything, let the horses rest. We don't have to take a long rest, but. Eat and water the horses. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then lead them. Luckily, I forgot I meant to kill the horses off with the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> and I completely, like, they were in the radius of the fireball. And I was like, I meant to say, oh, yeah, by the way, roll saving throws for the horses. But somehow they all have evasion and oh. roll really well. Oh, I rolled, net, I rolled net 20s for all, all four of them. And they have evasion, so they take no damage. And no damage. Sweet. Good they're horses. All, they're all high-level rogues. Nice. Uh, Trixie horses. Yeah. Uh, Trixie Nene's. My daughter calls anything that Woody or Jesse can ride a Nene. Nice. Including our dog. And well, our I mean, dog. technically, they can ride JoJo right now because JoJo's a medium-sized Um, so yeah, I mean, you can camp for the evening, you can not, you can, so what is your plan? Is it to stay the course and keep marching through the night? 
which means you'd be resting effectively if you march through the entire night you'd be arriving towards the village at daybreak but you'd be very tired i where you are now you're probably safe enough that you'd be okay to camp um i i'll set up alarm uh just so we know if anything's coming and then we can set a watch but i don't think we want to do the fortress (laughs) and you can see uh you can start to see the mountains in the distance all right so So it sounds like we rest and then press on outside okay yeah same watch order Yes, uh, set up a little camp with the alarm spell. All right. Your camp for the night is unmolested, even though you have fears of being attacked from the shadows. But you are not. Everyone who is on watch gets to hold the orb. The gem. Yeah, the gem. Do you need to attune to it? Oh, no, it's just magic okay. item. You say it the just... word and it lights up. Nice. So everyone gets their uh, nightlight. Shadow, shadow puppets. Put it in a lantern and it's like, you know, a cone. Well, I mean, I, I could, I got a lantern of revealing too. Okay. What does the lantern of revealing do? It's a 30 foot uh, bright light additional. 30 dim and it's invisible creatures okay. are visible in it it's not yeah, it's not it, like find the rogue yeah no it, it's if they are invisible they're visible now gotcha <clears throat> all right so you continue to head west um it's about noontime when you can see in the distance the village at the base of this old volcano Um, You can see a few serpentine shapes flying above the town as they circle back and forth. Looks like they're flying some sort of watch pattern from what you can tell. So now we can see the the village, right? Yeah, you can see there's a wall built around it. How high are are the walls? Um, you're not that, like, it's hard for you to tell at this distance. They're definitely higher than man-sized. And what you see actually walking, like, outside of the walls are, what you can tell are, based on distance and everything else, are clearly a handful of giants moving about the walls. Just giants. And with that, we are going to end tonight's session. Yeah. Uh... Because you have made it to the village so thank you everyone thank you to my players for playing thank you to the audience thank you to betty for creating betty the shadow dragon it's great i love it um and i will use it often or at least next week um so yeah i have been twin dead tweets on the bird app and players please reintroduce yourselves and let everybody know who you played and where they can find you next. On the hey internet. guys, I am Alan, your Eldritch Keeper, and you can find me on Twitter and Twitch as the Eldritch Keeper. And today I was playing uh, Widriel Kaithana, awesome rogue, uh, really, really fun to play. It was my first time playing a rogue ever, so really enjoyed it. You can see me tomorrow for Call of Cthulhu, Mask of Nyarlathotep, and next week for Jihai Joe and again D D. Hello all, I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and tonight I played Artabash, the cleric that forgot all of his bright light items. And you can find me next tomorrow for Call of Cthulhu and then Cult. And I am, as always, Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. I was playing Aiden, now known as Bitch Blossom. <laughs> I see you changed <laughs> it. I didn't see that. <laughs> so no longer Birch Blossom is now Aiden Bitch Blossom. Uh, 
the can't believe Ranger. you didn't see that one coming. I, I didn't. <laughs> Uh, the next time you guys can find me here on the channel will be next Tuesday for some more Dark Sun. And I am Rosie, regular science mom. You can find me on Twitter at mom underscore sized or as odd duck dice on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok because I like to make dice. They're pretty. So pictures of math rocks. Yes, Dave has several of my sets. Pictures of math rocks and videos of demolding. Uh, my dice and you can find me next tomorrow over on big dad industries which is my husband's channel at uh, 8 30 p.m eastern standard time we will be playing the first uh, of a three shot technocrat game we are being called in as a sort of emergency amalgam to investigate an enlightened citizen on what they've done. So tune if tune in if you can. If you can't watch it live, watch the VOD. Uh, I'll be playing. There's going to be some fantastic people. Ben runs a fantastic game of mage. And I will be playing with Tyler, our own Warple Eldritch Echoes, who runs the mage game that I will also be in on Sunday. Uh, so check me out as a technocrat tomorrow and as a mechanicus on Sunday. And then find me again here next Thursday. Nice. Well, again, thank everybody so much for playing tonight. Thank everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I will, technically, you will see me tomorrow. And then I will see you next week here for part two of Rise of Pyrosythe. Goodbye.